Give me a second. Data connection. And I think. Thank you so much. I'm so honored and excited to be here today with you. Thank you very much. Um, from my heart to the entire DL team, Steffi, Yossi, Melissa, and everyone there helping us for a physical world. I'll do my very best in such a short time to um, hopefully talk about as much as optimism, as much as future, and hope, peace, and love. I'm a media artist and coming from Los Angeles with my wife, Efsun, and I'm originally from Istanbul, Turkey, started my journey. And one of the, probably many of us here love technology, and I was eight years old, with my, met my first computer. And the computer inspired me so much. I was escaping into the computer as a mean of like creativity. But I think I was also eight years old when I watched the movie Blade Runner. And I, just, I think child, I didn't like get very dystopian. In fact, I found Utopia in the movie. And I was super inspired by the idea of maybe near future architecture can be more inspiring than what we have. And in Berlin, 2008, there was this incredible event where I was able to see Lev Manovich, one of my heroes, incredible lecture. And he was mentioning maybe invisible space of electronic data flows around us can be a substance rather than just as void, something that needs a structure, a politics and poetics. So tonight, I, you know, same year, I got my very first also time work with a computer in a way that I was able to create a data visualization. And I, I think I coined the term data painting in 2008 and obsessed with the idea of what will happen if we go beyond our existing concrete, steel, and glass world of architecture, and what will happen if we can transform them into these beautiful environments. And 2011 was an ex another inspiring year where I was able to get the memories of the street in Istanbul, where the protest, the love, the peace, the football, everything exists. I was able to get the three days of sound data and transform it into a sculpture. At that time, I realized that actually data, while it's an incredible numbers and mathematics and the machine collaboration and dialogue, but what will happen if data also becomes a form of a memory? And I believe that the poetics exists in data, and by using art and critical thinking and using realistic thinking around data, I start creating data sculptures and paintings. By the way, this frame is a curatorial rejection because I was trying to make a huge frame around the building, and they said it's very expensive. And that was the time that that frame became an action. And of course, we all as humans constantly growing around the data and we are becoming more and more in the world. Our like, desire and experiences, likes and comments and shares are creating impact both in the energy world and also our emotions. And we are all becoming connected. So I found that actually there's an incredible connection in physical and virtual worlds, but also this inspiring moment that what will happen to ourselves as humanity and how we as we are all changing and how the like control mechanisms become something else. As we all know, right? The first thing we see in the morning is a machine. The last thing is like a computer or a, or a machine. And pretty much like where we go, what we eat, like what we say, what we buy, what, pretty much predictable machines around us. And also the sense of displacement becomes so fun and exciting to think about like what will happen if this sense of displacement becomes a canvas. And over the years, I think John Mayer says it's very well, design is a solution to your problem, art is a question to your problem. I think I found this big question, very heavy one, what does it really mean to be a human in 21st century? This beautiful monkey learns how to use Instagram in just 30 seconds, and I ask myself, how can I go this journey beyond myself, not egocentric, with a wonderful team? We are 15 people, a small studio, uh, talking 15 language and represent 10 countries. And our kind of like role is try to create art for anyone, any age, and any background. Like trying to find this language of humanity, I hope one day, that is completely unbiased and anyone in the world can somehow relate, connect, and feel emotional. And I found that actually there's an incredible chance of humanity finding non-human in humans, or humans in non-humans, and vice versa. And eventually, the idea of machine as a collaborator became this kind of a body extension. Um, and over the years, we did many interventions around the world with the music, architecture, neuroscience, AI, and always try to like, find art, science, and technology, and AI, neuroscience, and architecture, and eventually find meaningful narratives between humans, machines, and environments. And I found that it's pretty exciting that not only just art for private institutions, but art for public, art for nonprofits, art for everyone that I hope one day can also exist equally everywhere. And maybe 2016, you may remember this image called Deep Dream. Finally, we were seeing how a machine can create this hallucinative image. Basically, we are seeing from a Google researchers a blog post that shows an AI train on many images of animals 
we're creating this moment. So as a sci-fi lover, as an artist loving computers, I find it fascinating that finally we can go and understand how AI can be used creatively. And that was the year, fortunately, start my journey with AI, 2016. The very first action I took was this idea of library of the future. I do hope that one day all our data in the world that exists, that is open to anyone, can be in a world as the Borges imagine. And for this project, we create this immersive environment where you can go and interact with data. And as we all know, data can only become an ex inform a knowledge when it is experienced. And we thought that libraries are one of those divine spaces, and many information can take space. And latent space is a beautiful problem of AI, the black box. We don't know what it learns, how it learns, what it can create. But as a creator, I found that it's very fascinating that these 10 to 24 dimensions can also become a space to imagine. And over the years, we learned that using AI, for example, on the left side, nine years of librarians recording data. On the right side, only in 90 minutes, an AI resorting the same data. And these data universes became super inspiring. And the, I think Archive Dreaming achieved something inspiring. Free open public art using AI, I think one of the most hopefully ethical way of using AI, in a library, open source data, open space, allows humans to go in, interact with the machine learning, and find new ways of asking questions. I do believe feature is beyond just a boring search bar. I do believe we are more smart and more engaging with technology that I do believe of course, questions are more important than the answers. So we are trying this experiment in many dimensions, both in physical and also virtual. And one thing that found this name of the talk, Mission Hallucination, started exactly that time. On the very left side, you are seeing very early, very baby steps of an AI trained on 1.7 million documents. And GAN algorithm, GAN, back in time, Ian Goodfellow, who are the inventor of the um, algorithm, was at Google. And the question was, if a machine can learn, can a dream question came? Of course, this dream and the learning is ever limited. But on the right side, it was very funny to experiment. I thought that this data is not something, a pigment of a dried pigment, but maybe something in life that is constantly changing. So the machine hallucination started. And last six years, me and my team trained more than 100 AI models to make just art. And we transformed cultural, urban, and nature as a teams looking for the data that hopefully belongs to humanity. And we look at that we never use any personal data and try to create ethical research around AI to create pieces emotionally engaging. Even though they look similar, actually every single data, every single archive creates a new meaning, a new pattern, a new movement. So we found that actually the archives of humanity becomes our fundamental inspiration. And one of those exciting moments, of course, not only just AI, but we also create art through algorithms, as you see here, a custom network that is used real time with researchers. So not only art, but we also give this uh, software to researchers around the world. They're also trying. And of course, asking this heavy question, can we reconstruct a memory without bridging ethical quality of life? And it's a pretty big one, I know, but we are also helping dementia, Alzheimer's, and many other tools that I do hope that we can find connection. And embedding AI into architecture became a very inspiring topic that we trained many neural networks over the years, such as New York, 113 million images, transformed into this immersive environment. So what you are watching is an 18-channel projection, an immersive environment that closes your entire peripheral vision, creates an experience by using 32-channel sound. More than 300,000 people enjoy this idea of ethical AI research in a public space that allows you to like deep dive into the mind of a machine and without wearing any television on the face or AR or XR, find ways of interacting with this world of machine imaginations. And over also in Berlin, in Kraftwerk, we achieved Latent Being, a wonderful project with LAS that was also finding new ways of interacting with AI and architecture. And finally, I would like to, before our next panel with my heroes and Hans Ulrich and many wonderful friends, the public art and experiential NFTs are also became very important. As we know, during the pandemic, especially this non-fungible token and especially its impact on digital art became super profound. But I want to show you something different than just an image, just a video, just an audio. I want to show that it's also possible to create experiential NFTs that hopefully brings people together. For example, here we use space data from NASA GPL and transformed it into a data sculpture and became this immersive room. What you are seeing is a three-dimensional space that where you can step inside the 
this physical virtual world where two worlds collide. I do believe Metaverse is beyond just a boring marketplace or under like a TV on our face. I do believe it's more experiential, more fun and emotional and meaningful and purposeful. So we are researching this idea in a public space, immersive environments. Another one, for example, 75 million flowers that are trained AI in an immersive room. When you open the door, this NFT space is three-dimensional, but also have the scent of AI. So we created this AI that is, by the way, for a collaboration, a Charlie dreamed on half million molecules of every potential scent of a flower trained AI that you can feel it when AI dreaming. Another example is wonderfully honored collaboration with MoMA, which thanks to Paolo Antelli, Michel Ko, and Jan Posma, we were able to create pretty much very first significant NFT AI project, transform incredible MoMA archives into a living artwork, which is real-time transforming infinitely by using NVIDIA's StyleGAN2 ADA algorithm. So, and we had also pieces accessible to everyone that is not just for a small group of people, but the community in general. And lastly, we also work with quantum AI computation, create many pieces, and also found that, that the sublime scale artworks also inspired the audience. This is a piece in Melbourne. We couldn't see it during the pandemic. We heard that more than 1.7 million people enjoyed the piece in National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, watching AI dreaming nature. And another piece in Miami, which was another beautiful setup, I guess one person <laughs> meditating on the sunrise and sunset, and one person enjoying artwork in the heart of Miami Beach. Another NFT idea that is not just um, a piece of experience in the public space. And one more, I think, inspiring experience in Berlin, Koenig Gallery, we make this project called Nature Dreams, which truly reached 200,000 people in just five weeks. What was amazing here is NFT can also become a space, a safe, secure, emotional world when the audience connects their self with this deep emotional context. And thank you very much for this all incredible people came around the world during pandemic. And I'm very grateful the last project this last week in Barcelona. Another NFT idea this time connected 47,000 people in the public space. This time we were taking the heritage of Anthony Gaudi's heritage of tomorrow, I'm calling it, into metaverse. We use more than entire 100 billion points of the facade data, uh, UNESCO heritage, and using a real-time wind data, the environmental data, create a dynamic NFT that transform the facade, iconic facade, into metaverse by using um, real-time information from real life. And finally, we achieve this in performance with the city of Barcelona. So I do believe there's a hope, there's a future with technology that once the idea is openly shared, publicly shared, and finding human in non-human in the most optimist and pessimist way is still very doable. Thank you very much, and see you in data land.